Greetings to you, each and every one of you at HRC. Let me acknowledge Dr. Bernard, Dr. Blaze, and all the leaders of Harvest Revival Center for this privilege to bring God's word alive to you this morning. And before I share the word, I have a word of encouragement for each one of you. And this is what God is saying to us at this time. He says, do not look to your right, do not look to your left, do not go backwards, but look up to me and I will lead you forward one step at a time. And yes, as, all, as we look around all, of, all around us, all we see is discouragements, disappointments, depression, and, dis and despair. But as long as your eyes are focused on the Lord and your priority is in God and your directions, your daily directions are led by the Lord, you are on the right track. You are doing the right thing at the right time. Shall we pray at this time? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. We acknowledge your awesome presence in our midst. And Father, we pray, Lord, let your word, your powerful word, come under the power of your anointing. And Lord, you will minister to each and every one of us, Lord, in a powerful way this morning. Lord, let our hearts be open open and sensitive to your spirit and let our spiritual ears be open to hear what you are saying personally to us and Lord open our spiritual eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your law and Father we surrender ourselves to you right now Lord we give the rest of this time into your precious hands Lord that you will lead us and you'll guide us and you'll have your own way in our midst this morning in Jesus wonderful name we pray Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My sharing today is from Acts chapter 6. And my title is Get Ready to Be a Disciple Maker. Now the book of Acts is the book of the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit at work. And here in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the, Jesus told the disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my disciples in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. And this was a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit when revival took place on all the people, those who are waiting in the upper room. The Holy Spirit came upon each one of them. This was a powerful outpouring. And this is the first Pentecost. And then the second Pentecost, the second outpouring, came about between 1904 to 1984, where we see that the revivals took place. The Azusa Street Revival, the Welsh revi Revival, the Barrio Revival, and other revivals. Now these are the manifestations of the power of God through the Holy Spirit, which has come down from generation to generation to us as disciples of Christ today. Now today, God is actually desiring one more time to pour out a spirit on all flesh. And in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 and 29, it tells us, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And also on the men servants and the maid servants, the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon them in those days. And here it comes to pass, it is coming to pass today that God is wanting to pour out His Spirit one more time. And here we are looking forward to the third Pentecost. And I'm telling you, it's going to be the greatest outpouring that we've ever heard about. 
because this is preparing us for the coming of the Lord. There's going to be greater revival. There's going to be greater outpouring and greater harvest that's going to come in. The greatest harvest that's going to come in. And, and here right now, we're going to see what happens when an outpouring takes place and what we need to do when the outpouring comes upon us and revival is here. We need to prepare ourselves. That's why I said we need to get ready to be disciple makers. Now in all this, even when you look at from Acts chapter 2 right up to the end of the book and in through all the revivals, we see one thing prominent, that souls are being saved in thousands, 3,000, 5,000. In, and in, can you imagine when people get saved in this, at this rate? It's just like babies being born one after another in the thousands. Now, we know that babies need to be nurtured, need to be looked after, need to be loved, and that nappies need to be changed. We need to feed them. And so likewise, when these souls begin to get saved, there's so many of them, how can we handle? Like the Bible says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. In Matthew 9, 37 and 38, it says that we should pray for the Lord of the harvest to send in laborers. And we are the laborers, we are the disciples, and we need to begin to prepare for this revival by making disciples. Now, we can see and not only the souls will be saved, and at this time, when revival takes place, you see that people will get healed, miracles will take place, and people will be set free in deliverances, and all these people need to be discipled. They need to grow in the Lord. And so this is the reason we, at this time, as we prepare for the third Pentecost, we need to be prepared to be made disciple makers. We need to be, be disciple makers. And here we see, in, uh, in the, let's come back to the book of Acts chapter 6. And in Acts chapter 6, this is what happened. You can see that the disciples, the 12 disciples were just few of them and the multitudes that were saved, they were overwhelmed. They didn't know what to do, you know. And so you see in Acts chapter 2 and verse 6 that they summon, they summon all the disciples, other disciples, a multitude, it says, a multitude of disciples to come. So we can see from here that while they were waiting in the upper room, they were not just waiting, they were preparing for this outpouring and so they begin to disciple other disciples. And so when the, when the outpouring took place and they were overwhelmed, they called the multitude of disciples to come and help to make disciples. Now this is what we should be doing today. While we are waiting for the third Pentecost, while we are waiting for the power of God to hit us, for revival to take place, for souls to be saved, to see healing, miracles, signs, wonders, deliverances, as we are looking forward to this, and this is a good time during the pandemic, instead of doing other things, that we will prepare ourselves to be disciple makers. And so we should start discipling those around us. We shouldn't leave anybody out. We should be thinking of one another. We should look at one another and disciple one another and prepare ourselves to be strong. Because we know the harvest is going to be the greatest that we have ever seen. And so before we become disciple makers, we personally need to be disciples. Now who is a disciple? Let me share with you three things about who a disciple is. A disciple knows who his allegiance is to. Yes, he knows who is working for? Who is, is he looking up to? And number two, a disciple knows that his life, his job, his family, everything is given by God. And he is merely just a steward of what has been given to him. 
And number three, a disciple is one who knows that his life does not belong to him. A disciple's life belongs to Jesus. The disciple's life belongs to others. Now when Jesus came, he was a, the greatest disciple. He did not think of himself, but he thought for us, for each one of us. And that's why we are here today as disciples. Now as, as the revival takes place and as the numbers begin to grow and you see that the believers begin to increase, you will see that the disciples will begin to become disciple makers. Because those who are already disciples, those we know we are already disciples, when this takes place, immediately you will know what we should do. We should rise up and start discipling them. And so the more disciples we have, the more, uh, the more disciple makers we will have, you know, at this time. And here in Acts chapter 6 and verse 3, it tells us what the disciples, the 12 disciples did. They picked out another four. They prayed. They called them out. They prayed, laid hands on them and sent them out to be disciple makers. And this is exactly what we should be doing right now, preparing disciples and disciple makers. We need to study the word of God, teach them to pray, teach them to be strong in the law, to be steadfast, immovable in the situation that we are facing today. Put aside the dis discouragements and the disappointments that we see. Put aside the depressions that we see around us and the people who are in de despair. But let us build ourselves, gird up our loins and be strong, you know, and be disciple makers. Because this is so, so important at this time. And here we see in Acts chapter 6, you know, in Acts chapter 6 and verse 5, it tells us what kind of people, what kind of disciples or what kind of disciple makers they were looking at. And this is found in Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. Number one, they were looking for people with good reputation. Remember in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, it tells us that Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. With favor with God and man. And number two, they, were look, they looked out for people with the full of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean, to be full of the Holy Spirit? That you'll be sensitive to the Spirit of God. God is alive in you. Day by day, you're hearing His voice clearly, and you're just listening and obeying. Full of the Holy Spirit. Full, filled with the Spirit of God day and night. And then thirdly, we are looking for people who are the wisdom of God. Not the wisdom of the world, not the wisdom of, of men, but the wisdom of God. In James 1 and verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, ask and God will give it to you liberally. And so we need to tap on this. We need to tap on the wisdom of God. Ask God to fill you with the wisdom of God that we may be able to handle all the situations that come about during the revival. And number four, you need to be filled with faith. It takes faith for us to arise and do the work of God. We need the wisdom of God to come upon us to do the right thing at the right time. And so these are the four points. Let me repeat these points from Acts chapter 6 and verse 5. Number one, we're looking for people with good reputation. Number two, we're looking for people who are full of the Holy Spirit and sensitive to His voice. And number three, we are looking for people with the wisdom of God. And number four, people who are filled with faith. Faith as small as a mustard seed that can move mountains. We need to have that kind of faith. Now, therefore, church, this is a very crucial time for each one of us as disciples. Now, let's look out for one another. Make sure everyone 
is discipled and everyone becomes a disciple maker because we know the enormous outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's going to come upon us and the harvest is going to be so great. It's going to be all kinds of people, different kinds of people, different languages. So it will be good if you prepare yourself as a disciple maker and know different languages you, so that you can be there and available to disciple those according to their language. So this is what we need to be doing at this time. And God will be raising up many disciples and many disciple makers at this time. So if you are available to God, you just tell him that you are available and start studying the word of God and look out for people that you can disciple, that you may be ready. And, you, and finally, in Acts chapter 6 and verse 7, this is what happened. The more the disciples increased, more disciple makers came about. And you know what was the result of it? The word of God spread like wildfire to many parts of the world. And this is what God is looking for because Jesus is wanting to come back soon. You know, and so he wants the word of God to spread like wildfire. And so the disciples and the disciple makers must be multiplied. And this is the time. People of God, don't take this lightly. If you are a disciple today, you need to know that you cannot remain as a disciple. You need to be a disciple maker. You don't remain as a disciple for yourself that you are ready for the coming of the Lord. But you need to become a disciple maker so that you can disciple others and get others. The harvest is going to be really great. And so the outpouring of the power of God is also going to be great. The anointing of God will come upon you. Don't be afraid. Don't think, oh, I can't disciple others. I don't really know the word of God. It's time right now to study the word of God and to disciple. When you disciple others, you will grow. And that's how it works in the kingdom of God. If you feel you don't have enough, when you begin to give, God begins to fill you. And you will have all that you need because it's not our ability. It's only our availability that God is looking for, that we will be ready to be disciple makers. And with this, I end this message, but I just want to pray with all of you that God will stir within you the Spirit of God and know that that outpouring of the Spirit is coming. And we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We need to be disciple makers. And now is the time. Now is the time to be ready. Get ready. Every one of you. God will not bypass any one of you. Because he's wanting to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Whether you feel you weak, whether you're uneducated. Well, the, the disciples in the early days were fishermen. They were uneducated. But God anointed them and great wonders and miracles and signs took place through their lives. And we are the disciples and the disciple makers of today looking forward to the third Pentecost. And God has already anointed us. We just need a refreshing and a revival that will come upon us to stir us up, to walk the streets and bring about miracles, souls being saved, miracles, signs, wonders, deliverances, people being set free, coming into the kingdom of God. So right now, I just want to pray with you. Let's just pray right now. Let's lift up your voices and just pray in the Spirit. Let the power of God hit you this morning. Oh, Spirit of the living God, come. Lord, let this be the hour of your outpouring. Let your anointing come upon every believer, that every believer will not remain a believer, but they will become disciples. And Lord, Lord, you will raise up many disciple makers at this time in preparation for the great outpouring that we are looking forward to. The power of your Holy Spirit and fire. 
thank you spirit of the living god just fill us lord fill each and every one lord right now as we are praying let your presence just flow let your spirit just move among us lord and stir our hearts lord let there be a, a spiritual awakening a personal revival within us a hunger for your word a thirst for your presence a desire to come into your presence and to worship you and to be with you Yes Lord we know the early disciples they were with you and Lord with us you have been with us through the holy spirit and father we thank you for your presence in anointing in our lives that we will arise and do what you have left us to do you said go into all the world and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit this morning Lord we surrender ourselves to you that you will fill us you will anoint us and you'll begin to use us powerfully right now we thank you in jesus name we pray i just before we go i just want to specifically pray for a group of people who are having sleepless nights you have a spirit of confusion within you sometimes you're so restless sometimes you don't know what you are really doing but right now we want to just pray that the lord will just touch you Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Lord. Father, I specifically pray for those who cannot sleep well at night. I take authority of the restlessness. I take authority of the sleeplessness. Lord, your word says you give sleep to your beloved. Lord, these are your beloved children. Father, we pray that you will touch them. You will heal them of insomnia, that they will sleep through the night like a baby and they will wake up in the morning fresh to worship you and to connect with you and to draw near to you. Thank you Holy Spirit. And Father, I also pray for all those who are sick in the body. Father, we pray against every pain, every discomfort in their bodies. Lord, we pray for your healing power. Just as you died on the cross, Lord, we thank you for the stripes that you bore for our healing. And I pray for complete healing upon every person who's sick in the body. We speak miracles into their life. We pray we speak complete healing. that lord they will be set free those who need to be set free will be set free lord that you will cause each one of us to arise to be disciple makers in preparation for the outpouring of the holy spirit in jesus precious and wonderful name we pray and everybody say amen god bless you harvest revival center